Welcome to the gap. This is the gap. Yeah. They should have never gave you platform. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We are here. We are here. We are all golden. Ooh, I sound like a spiritual advisor. We are here. We are golden. We are peaceful. We are democratic creatures. <laughs> nah, I lost it right there. I didn't know what to say afterwards. <laughs> What's good with y'all out there? This is The Gab. I'm Kamal. And this is episode 30. Big 3-0. You feel me? Hey, man, if y'all 30 and older, you already know how it is, bro. You start getting aches and pains in places that you never thought you would have aches and pains ever. You be like, nigga, what is this right below my shin? Why is this hurting? I didn't do anything but just walk a couple steps. Oh, my God. <laughs> Episode 30. Let's get it. Hey, look at Hold on. Before we get into it, book of the month. Bam. For my potters out there, from here to equality, reparations for black Americans in the 21st century. Mm. Good book. Shout out to my Uncle Aaron. Thank you for mailing this to me. Uh, this book, a lot of stats that are fucking crazy and the reason why we need reparations. I'm going to give you the gist of what I've been reading. I'm on page 100 and it's basically stating out a lot of inequalities that blacks had to go through. Which is the reason why we deserve reparations in America. That's the gist of the book that, like, so far that I'm reading. Y'all go out there, get this book, read it, study it. You know what I mean? This was written by William and Der William A. Darity Jr. and A. Kristen Mullen. Shout out to y'all. Great book. Everybody should read this. Bro, book of the month. We out here. Hey, looking for my tubers, like, share, comment, subscribe, push that notification bell. For my potters out there, go to Google Podcasts, go to Apple Podcasts, go to SoundCloud. Type in The Gab or type in Kamal Johnson. Bow, pop up. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Leave your boy rating. Leave your boy a review. All that good shit. You know how the fuck to do. And then, thank you to the sponsor, First Place Loser. Damn, rocking it right now. Bow. Been updating the site, getting new products on there and stuff like that. About to have new designs on there soon. The link to the shop going to be below. Go check it out. You feel me? I should start putting my social media links too. Y'all go check out. Uh, My social media links is in the description below. Y'all go check it out. Kamal Johnson. Kamal Johnson ENT on IG. Go on there. Follow it. Talk to your boy. Let's get it. All right. So you know the format of the show. So we about to just. Hop right into this shit. And this is all they've been fucking talking about the whole week. Most of the time. It ain't really been a lot of news. It's only been this shit. And it's just like... Ugh. And I, I just touched bases on it last week. But we don't talk about it again. The Delta variant. Yes. The new strain of the vid. Because I ain't about to say the regular word. Because they will flag you. Bow. Look it, it's happening, it's here, uh, a lot of cases are going up, a lot of hospitalization cases are going up, even people that's been vaccinated are catching it, but they're better equipped to fight it, um, this will happen when you don't fucking really listen, I'm sorry, this is what happens, you don't listen to fucking science, <laughs> like, nigga, I keep telling y'all, Bill Nye, the fucking science guy, did not go through this bull malarkey for us to not listen. We shouldn't be in this. <laughs> Fuck, man. Goodness. Yeah, so like, just be prepared. If they put us back on lockdown again, they're probably going to put back the mask mandates. So that means you're going to have to start wearing your mask again, going into places, going anywhere and stuff like that. And if shit gets worse, we might be back on lockdown. I hate to say it. I don't want to be on lockdown, but it might happen. So prepare yourself. Stack your chips. If you got anything online going, that's a shop, a show, whatever, prep that shit. Have that shit out. Be ready to fucking uh, promote that because niggas might be back in the house. 
because the fucking Delta variant. We just, we got to be glad any spirit variant. I think that'll wipe. The spirit variant would have wiped out the earth. We would be gone. We'd be really going to Mars with Jeff Bezos and shit. <laughs> We'd be fucking out of here for the spirit variant. Deal. Oh my God. Man. But yeah, just prepare yourself because we might be going back on lockdown. I'm not 100% sure, but the way things are going, might be back on it. And also, it's happening, stock market going on crazy and shit. But I always say buy stocks, you know what I mean, that that you're going to hold for 5 to 10 years. I'm listening to financial advisors. I'm listening to a, a podcast on... Uh, uh, Market Mondays, they give great advice. One person on there is a financial advisor, the other two aren't. They clearly state that. I'm not a financial advisor either, but what I'm doing, my practices, I'm buying stocks of companies that most likely not going to lose, and you have to hold five to ten years to get that booming profit. One stock I own, Apple. You know why? Because I fucking use Apple all the time. I got a bunch of Apple products. Why not buy a stock that you already invest in? Amen. But yeah, stock market going all crazy, going up and down, up and down. Bit, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency going all up and down, up and down because it's Delta variant. So people out there, be prepared. We might go back on lockdown, get the vaccine. Uh, They're not requiring you to wear a mask, but in certain places, like I said last week in LA, mask mandate going back up. So certain places might start having a mask mandate again. Um, and just, uh, protect yourself out there, people. Shit. Uh, be ready. Cause, uh, winter is coming. And it, it might be a doozy. <laughs> but, let's get into the next topic. And this leads into, um, you know, cause we were relaxing off the vid. People were going back to work, going back into their offices, working in group settings, not working from home. And what that leads to people going back into the office is motherfucking microaggression. Especially black women in the workplace. (sighs) Yes, microaggression. If you don't know what microaggression is, microaggression is, look it. I got this book right here, right? Then I'm reading it. And a white person reading it and and then like see me reading it, right? And I'll start explaining it to him, like, yeah, you know, like, back in the day, like, not even back in the day, even now, a fucking high school, white, high school, GED graduate, whatever you want to fucking call it, white woman, gets the same amount of money as a college graduate black woman. And then a white dude be like, oh, dang, you're smart. I didn't know you would be this smart. Wow, you're very articulate too. Microaggression. Another example of microaggression. Black woman come in to the office having her beautiful hair everywhere, just looking all beautiful and shit. Then we got Peggy come in and be like, oh my God, your hair is so beautiful. Can I touch it? Oh. And then she reaches to try to touch her, touch her hair and she, motherfucker. I know the black woman will smack her hand, but you gotta do corporate thing. Be like, oh no, don't don't touch my hair, okay? Jeez, microaggression. This one motherfuckers gotta deal with going back into the workforce, and it's running rampant, and it's being talked about more because now it's even more prevalent. It's like, damn, like we gotta go back to work and deal with these microaggressions when it was better to just work at home. Hmm. I think more companies these are just have people stay and work at fucking home. Don't have to deal with traffic so much. Don't have to deal with the crazies. Don't have to deal with this bullshit microaggression. Okay? And you're going to be more productive at work if you're not a lazy bastard. If you're a lazy motherfucker, you just ain't going to get work done anywhere you at. But if you ain't lazy, you got ambition, pretty sure you're going to get a lot of work done at home. And you don't have to deal with microaggression. That shit is, that shit be throwing you off, man. Be like, making you not want to come into work. You got to deal with all, 
all the shit that like like as a black person you really be wanting to tell these motherfuckers yo get the fuck back shut your motherfucking mouth but in corporate world you can't say that so you gotta be all like oh Bill oh, oh, oh. no don't touch it my hair oh y- yes I'm I'm articulate I'm smart probably smarter than you you know but you gotta be all fucking fucking bullshitting with these motherfuckers man but anyway let's get off this topic look it microaggression is real in the work field and this shit wasn't happening when people was working at home and black women take the the blunt or brunt you know the fucking word i'm talking about that's all i be saying where i'm like oh no there's you know the brunt of this fucking action man they get a lot of microaggression and I think the the solution to this is really just if you can, if you're a company that don't need employees to come in or come in probably once a week, I'll say do that. Just let people work at home so I ain't got to deal with this bullshit. You feel me? I mean, okay. I think the, look at one, the only positive that comes from, that came from the lockdown and us being cavemen and women was uh, you get to work from home. You don't have to deal with a lot of bullshit like this. Well, that's all I got to say about that. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. You already know what time it is. Hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. Get you motherfuckers hype. Get out your motherfucking seat. Get the fuck up. If you sitting down, if you at work, and you playing me on YouTube or podcast, and then now I'm yelling like a motherfucker. You like, oh shit, this nigga starting to yell. Get the fuck out your seat. I don't give a damn. Fuck that. Get up. If you in your car driving, get up. I don't give a fuck. Get out your sunroof. Because we about to get into the sad segment. Ooh. And look at we about to get into one of these French shows on Netflix called Lupin. This shit's a good fucking show. You know what I mean? Great show. And uh, the, the critics kind of agree with me. Uh, IMDb gave it 7.5. And Rotten Tomato gave it 97%. Oh, for my potters out there, I just did the middle finger. Because I'm saying fuck them. Okay? <laughs> this came out January 8th, 2021. So this is a relatively new show. They did a two-part series, though. On January 8th, they came out with five episodes. And then, uh, like, three weeks ago in, uh, what, May? June, I think? May or June? One of those months. I don't know. They came out with the other five. Great show. All right. This is directed by Louis Leterrier. I'm, I'm pronouncing his name all types of wrong. It's spelled L-E-T-E-R-R-I-E-R. Leterrier and Marcella said. And was created and written by George K. and Francis. Or Fran- it's not pronounced Francis. It's like Fran- Francis Uzan. Whatever. Good job to y'all out there. <laughs> Good job to y'all out there. And it's starring Omar Sy, Ludivine Sagnier, and plenty of more. So, hey man. Y'all killed it out there. Y'all doing y'all thing. This is a French mystery thriller. Oh, mystery thriller. I love my thrillers and mystery. I love shows that's like this, like mystery, detective, puzzle solving, all that. You feel me? So, basically, this show is inspired by a fucking character who's a mastery thief. This nigga is still your identity. And make you to be the one to give it to him. That's how good of a thief he is. Uh. But yeah, it was uh, is, um, inspired by a character called Arson Lupin. And this was created by um, Maurice LeBlanc in the 1900s. It was books and shit. So what they did, and a lot of shows do this lately. They the, It's the same like Harry Potter. You read the books, and from the books you create a show out of it. Or a movie. So that's what's happening. Omar Sy is the main character, and he's like influenced by Lupin. And what basically what happened is he um the gist the the main plot of the story is Omar Sy character 
is trying to find out who framed and killed his father within this company that he stole this fucking diamond necklace from. Like, he was stealing, like, he did that shit to set up the main person. And it didn't, like, he didn't, he had a gist, but he didn't really find out until, like, the fourth episode. Then he was like, oh, they set me up. No, they set my father up. And now he's getting close to the truth. And now they're trying to set him up and kill him and stuff like that. But he's always three steps ahead of the fucking cops, as usual. You know what I mean? Cops so goddamn slow. And he's like three steps ahead of the other people that's trying to kill him and capture him and stuff. They kidnapped his son. He got his son back. Then they end up like this. This uh last thing they end up uh kid- kidnapping his fucking wife and shit. She got all caught up in the shit. But then like, I don't know, like he started working with the cops. Because then they find out like, oh, certain cops are dirty. And like the whole system is all dirty. Because bruh that's like got his father set up. Is into like he's he's in into politics. He's in everybody pocket. Politics, politician, cops, other just everything around there. A, a bakesman, a bakerman, nigga. They own the bake shop. He in his pocket. This nigga's just in everybody pocket. So like this nigga, he's trying to he's trying to fight for not only his dad freedom, but also his. So it's tight though. It's all mystery and shit. It's like some um, it's like this nigga lightweight magician. This nigga like David Blaine. <laughs> this nigga be having and he's a master of disguises. This nigga has three thousand type of disguises. This nigga one time, right? He was in some office trying to steal this document. Ended up being like a janitor. Then when he got to the 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 office, he tur- somehow had a suit. And then when he came out the office, he ended up being a fucking firefighter. <laughs> then nigga, he, he whooped someone's ass. Bow, bow, bow. Oh, you know what it's like? Y'all ever played the game Hitman? That's exactly how it's like. That's what this is. Minus the shooting. Because there's no violence. There's no, there's violence, but there's no like gruesome violence. Nobody, I haven't seen anybody get shot or stabbed or hit over the head with a bottle or beat badly. Like they keep the violence on the minimum. Which kind of impressive for this type of show. Uh, but yeah, like, this shit is just how, like, Hitman the video game is. Minus a nigga getting shot in the face. Man, this is incredible, though. Like, I like this. Like, it, it's good to, uh, to explore, explore options and explore other shows that are not just American made. You feel me? Netflix does, does that really well. They really have good international shows. There's a couple more. I'm going to review them for you guys. And I'm going to get it out there for y'all. So y'all can go watch it. Y'all need to watch this. Watch this. Watch Lupin. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. I think this is a, a fucking really great show. And it's just, it's up my alley. I love that detective mystery. Uh, What's going to happen next? What clue you need? And this and that. Like, that's just, that's just my thing. So if you into that, you're going to be into Lupin on Netflix. Y'all go check that out. Uh, hey, hey, man, let, let me know, bro. This, this this shit like hit, man. Mine is the killer. Let me know what. Let me know what you think is compared to. I think it's like the video game hit, man. <laughs> that shit fire. Bow. I don't know. Let's give a hand clap for the show. Good job, of y'all out there, man. Good shit. Ooh. All right. You know the next segment we about to get to. Oh, uh, shit. Oh, uh, shit. You know. I, uh. Ooh! For this next segment. I need you to. Nah. We're going to have to sit down for this one. Sit down. Turn everything fucking down. Except for this. You feel me? Stop all the noise around you. And get ready for this motherfucking... Mean time? Woo! You already know how we do. Ooh, ooh, mean time. All right, so for my potters out there, there's four squares. You have UPS in one, Amazon in the other, FedEx in one, and United States Postal Service in the other. And it reads under UPS, your order is in your city on a truck driven by Mike. It will arrive on your doorstep at 6.27 p.m. today. And if you're in the hood, we'll hide it for you. Cha-ching! 
That's how UPS is. Yeah, they be on it. Amazon. We know you just ordered two minutes ago. We're already inside your apartment, boo. <laughs> Check the bathroom on the counter by your body butter. Stop it. <laughs> this nigga Amazon be on it, bro. These niggas be at your shit instantly. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, Jeff Bezos, you creep. You creep, you be creeping. Your company the creep company. But they are fast. And they do be on their shit. <laughs> FedEx. And it reads below. Your package is coming. You'll get it when we get there. <laughs> Yo, FedEx is really like that. I ordered some fucking shoes. And FedEx was the company to fucking drop off my shoes. And I swear, there was like no tracking on this shit. I was just like, where the fuck are these motherfuckers gonna come? Damn. And... Yup, you guessed it. Right when I fucking left, that's when FedEx dropped off the package. Good thing I don't live in the hood, because that shit would have been gone. They would have stole my shit for sure. And in United States Postal Service, it reads under, you order something? When? <laughs> oh, man, bro, this is so funny. And, like, there's been an influx of online shopping going up so these services have been used and this is fucking accurate when it comes to all these services god damn oh my goodness wow incredible y'all incredible <laughs> all right for my potters we got one dude he got the he got the hands up like no don't do it then we got another dude uh bro balding oh white man bald oh these are two white people by the way just to let you know why don't white crime does exist? I know it's a mystery out there, but it do exist out there. Um, oh, pardon me. All right. Then you got the other brother. He bald headed. He, he bald in his shit, so he already mad, right? Then he got the knife in his hand. He like, bruh, I'm about to fucking stab you because you got a full head of hair. And look at me. God damn it. Looking like Moby. <laughs> and so above the one dude that got the hands up like, no, don't stab me, bruh. It says... Me not trying to have a bad day. And then on the person that got the knife, it reads, a bad day trying to have me. <laughs> ah, the bad day out here. Like, nigga, I don't give a fuck, nigga. We out here, fuck that bad day. That's how a bad day always happens. You be trying to avoid bad days and the crazies, and that shit just come right at you full fucking head of steam. Oh, you're not trying to have a bad day? Well, bad day trying to have you, nigga. What you gonna do? You gonna fight it? You gonna resist? Or you gonna succumb to the motherfucking bad day? You choose. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no, this nigga, uh, one more, one more, this nigga kind of, if y'all see Trailer Park Boys, he look like Mr. Lacey. That's who the bald-headed dude look like. Mr. Lacey. <laughs> all right, bro. You already know it's all about, you know, the vid news has been going on like crazy. So this meme goes along with it. All right. So has two pictures. One above has a woman. She's a scientist. She is concocting something. I don't know what the fuck she's doing, but it looks like she's doing some important work. And then below you have a woman on the phone. On the toilet. I don't know what she's doing. But. <laughs> Looks like she's concentrating on that phone. Really well. As she's taking maybe a dump. And women do take dumps. Alright. I'm tired of you women saying y'all don't poop. You motherfuckers poop more than men. Y'all just secret about it. Y'all pooping. at Y'all poop at weird hours. I bet women be pooping at like 4 in the morning. <laughs> Nobody knows that everybody sleep. That's when all women poop. Yep, that's when y'all be taking y'all dumps. Four in the morning. I figured it out. All right, back to this meme. So above where it had a woman doing the research in the lab coat and all that, it says, it says vaccine research. Oh. And then at the bottom with the chick on the phone on the toilet looking at her phone, it says anti-vax research. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's researching like, yo, hell no. Nah. Don't get this vaccine. It will turn you into a toad and have your ears looking like bunny ears. 
And I heard also that you would explode in the next three weeks if you take this vaccine. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Toilet scientists. Oh. No, not toilet scientists. Because she's just on the toilet with her. We're going to scratch that. The phone scientists. People that get their research off the phone and then become fucking <laughs> Bill Nye the science guy. Hey, is Bill Nye really a real scientist? I think he is. But he, I don't know. Could be bullshit. I don't know. But y'all know the phone scientists. The phone the phone researchers. that be out there like looking at their phone, getting all their fucking shit from their phone. And be thinking they experts. When in reality, we all don't fucking know. Actually, this person that's doing the that has a lab coat, this woman that has a lab coat and doing the actual real research, they should be experts at it. But who knows? We live in wacky world. I don't know. Nobody knows. We have the vax people versus the vax the vaccinated people, more divided. I don't get it. I just don't. Is science real anymore? Is anything real anymore? Like we have to ask ourselves these questions. Who is real? Is this fucking vid real? I don't know. Nah, this shit real though. Motherfuckers is dying and shit from it. So I gotta say, man, I got my vaccine. I got the shit like two months ago. I'm good. I'm feeling fine. So I'm living proof. Hey, man, if I turn into a goddamn dragon or a toad, I'll let y'all niggas know. I'll let y'all niggas know on the social medias. <laughs> Oh man! Yo, y'all get yourself a hand out there, yo. You know how I do. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Hey man, this is the game on Kamal. Episode 30. Let's go. We out here. We're doing it big now. We episode 30. Look for my potters out there. Y'all go on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, type in the gap. T H E G A B. Or type in Kamal Johnson. K A M A L Johnson. Boom, pop up. For the tubers out there, like, share, comment, subscribe, and push that notification bell. Ooh. Man, I appreciate y'all. Look at once again, my sponsors, First Place Loser, been rocking the gear. Y'all go down below, check out the, check out the link. The link to my social media is going to be down below, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, about to have a shirt soon, too. About to be the uh, the Bia, the Bia squad. The Bia squad. We in the building. BS, Bia squad. Boom. FIFO gang. FIFO gang in the bitch, too. Funny information. Yeah, I'm about to get that shit running. FIFO gang and Bia, the Bia boy squad. Nah, not boy. We just going to say Bia squad. <laughs> Be a squad in this bitch. On that note, I'm out. Peace out, y'all. Watch, bro. Spirit Bear ain't gonna come next. That's gonna be our demise. It's over. This was a game. This was a game.